Hello everyone, I'm Dr. James Pepper, but you can call me James. Come for a quick lesson on glycogen, have you? Well, great. It just so happens to be my specialty. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Glycogen synthesis, also known as glycogenesis, refers to the pathway by which glucose is converted to glycogen. The two major sites for glycogen storage are the liver and skeletal muscle. Glycogen in the liver can be broken down to glucose and re-enter the bloodstream, playing an important role in maintaining blood glucose homeostasis. However, most of the body's glycogen, about 75%, is stored in the muscle, because the muscle makes up a much greater portion of the body's weight than the liver. <laughs> makes sense, doesn't it? The glycogen stores in the muscle can be used as an energy source in that muscle fiber when the body is confronted by an energy demand, such as physical exertion. Therefore, the glycogenic pathway is vitally important in ensuring a reserve of constant energy. Now that we got the background info out of the way, let's continue to the reactions portion. Glucose is first phosphorylated upon entering the cell, producing a phosphate ester at the 6 carbon of the glucose. For muscle cells, the enzyme catalyzing this phosphate transfer from ATP is hexokinase. Hexokinase is an allosteric enzyme that is negatively modulated by the product of the reaction glucose 6-phosphate. That means when the muscle cell has enough glucose 6-phosphate, additional glucose is phosphorylated at a slower rate. On the other hand, glucose phosphorylation in the liver is catalyzed primarily by glucokinase, sometimes called hexokinase D. Although the reaction product, glucose 6-phosphate, is the same in both cases, there are some interesting differences between the two enzymes. For example, remember how hexokinase is negatively modulated by glucose 6-phosphate? Well, glucokinase is not. This characteristic allows extra glucose entering the liver cell to be phosphorylated quickly and encourages glucose entry when blood glucose levels are elevated. In addition, glucokinase has a much higher Michaelis constant than hexokinase, meaning that it can convert glucose to its phosphate form at a faster rate should the cellular concentration of glucose rise significantly, for example, after a carbohydrate-rich meal. In muscle, the much lower Michaelis constant of hexokinase indicates that it is catalyzing at its maximum rate even at normal glucose concentrations. Glycogenesis is initiated by the presence of glucose 6-phosphate. The phosphorylation of glucose as it enters the liver cell keeps the level of free glucose low. In other words, the liver has the ability to lower blood glucose concentration when it becomes too high. The hexokinase and glucokinase reactions are energy consuming because the glucose is activated or phosphorylated at the expense of ATP. The phosphate is transferred from the 6 carbon of the glucose to the 1 carbon in a reaction catalyzed by the enzyme phospholglucomutase. Boy, isn't that a mouthful. In the next reaction, energy derived from the hydrolysis of the alpha-beta phosphate anhydride bond of uridine triphosphate, or UTP, allows the resulting uridine monophosphate, or UMP, to be coupled to the glucose 1-phosphate to form uridine diphosphate glucose, or UDP glucose. Glucose is incorporated into glycogen as UDP glucose. The reaction is catalyzed by glycogen synthase and requires some preformed glycogen as a primer, to which the incoming glucose units can be attached. The initial glycogen is formed by binding a glucose residue to a tyrosine residue of a protein called glycogenin. Additional glucose residues are attached by glycogen synthase to form chains of up to 8 units. Note that glycogen synthase exists in an active or dephosphorylated form and a less active or phosphorylated form. Insulin facilitates glycogen synthesis by stimulating the dephosphorylation of glycogen synthase. When six or seven glucose molecules are added to the glycogen chain, the branching enzyme transfers them to a carbon number six hydroxyl group. Glycogen synthase cannot form the alpha-1-6 bonds of the branch point. This action is left to the branching enzyme which transfers a 7-residue oligosaccharide segment from the end of the main glycogen chain to carbon number 6 hydroxyl groups throughout the chain. Branching within the glycogen molecule is very important because it increases the molecule's solubility and compactness. Branching also makes available many non-reducing ends of chains from which glucose residues can be cleaved rapidly and used for energy in the process known as glycogenolysis. Lastly, the overall pathway of glycogenesis, like most synthetic pathways, consumes energy because an ATP and a UTP are consumed for each molecule of glucose introduced. Well, that just about covers the basics of glycogenesis. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation and now have a better understanding of how this pathway works. Thanks for dropping by, and have a great day.